you are invited to listen to another chapter of the dramatized story, The Life of Christ. Brought to you transcribed each week by the Graymore Friars, who offer this series with a prayerful hope that this vivid portrayal of the life of Christ will help to awaken in you a deeper personal love of God and a firm determination to strive to prove that love in your daily life. Now, Chapter 34, The Procession of Palms. Behold, the Lord hath made it to be heard in the ends of the earth. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy Savior come. He is poor and riding upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many from the country went up to Jerusalem before the Passover in order to purify themselves. And they were looking for Jesus. And they stood in the temple and were saying to one another, What do you think, that he is not coming to the feast? But the chief priests of the temple had given orders that if anyone knew where Jesus was, he should report it so that they might seize him. And they sent out their spies that they might discover where Jesus was. At Jerusalem, Caiaphas summoned his chief scribe to him. You sent for me, Caiaphas. Yes, Edna. Have you any news of Jesus? I have indeed. After hiding out in the Ephraim wilderness, he now appears openly, defiantly, I would say, at Bethany. What? He's less than two miles from the temple? At this very moment, he's at the house of Simon the leper, and with him is Lazarus, whom, as you know, he raised from the tomb. Do the people know of this? I have a feeling they do. I stood at the gate and watched many leave, headed for Bethany. We can no longer tolerate this man. If we let him alone as he is, all will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Pilate will be here for the Passover? Yes, he may arrive tonight, tomorrow at the latest. We're determined that if Jesus decides to enter the city, it will be his last visit. It's but six days before the feast. Feeling is running high. There's an air of expectancy, whisperings among the people. Yes, yes, I know. We'd like very much to take Jesus quietly before the feast and have the matter settled. It's going to be difficult. He is heavily guarded by the Galileans who would like nothing better than to see him proclaim king and drive out the Romans. Could you arrange to uh, plant a spy within his camp so we know in advance what his plans are? I doubt if that can be done. However, I think there's a way to get the information. How? By all means, tell me. As you know, he's surrounded by twelve whom he has chosen as his disciples or apostles, as he calls them. Yes, yes, that's common knowledge. I believe that one of these twelve has not been chosen wisely. That is, from Jesus' point of view. What do you mean? I've made a thorough study of every man. I've investigated them before they came to Jesus. In my reports, you'll find intimate details of their lives. Eleven of these would give their lives for Jesus. But who is the twelfth? Judas Iscariot. I think he can be reached. Why do you think so? We have to be sure. First, he's the only one who's not a Galilean. He's Judean. And I think the others have made him aware of his unique position. He is also the treasurer of the group and has a love of money. He's the best educated of the twelve and of questioning nature. 
Where the others accept Jesus by faith, he's a businessman, a former administrator, and inclined to be hard-headed about everything, including miracles. He's a moderate man, not given to extreme. Why then does he throw in his lot with this radical who would trample our traditions in the dust? I suppose when he saw Jesus could gather people to him, he joined with the idea that if the movement ever amounted to anything, he would be in a good position. But times dragged on. Judah seems bored with these endless miracles that make the innocent gape, but get the disciples no place. He once confided in me... Ah, then you've talked to him recently. I had an interesting talk with him that day Jesus spoke in Capernaum, right after feeding a lot of people. The day so many turned from him over the question of what Jesus termed the bread of life. Himself, in fact, which he invited people to eat. I was watching Judas. He seemed embarrassed. It was then I got the idea he might be useful to us. He confided to me then that Jesus had missed his opportunity when the crowd tried to proclaim him king. Yes, I recall the incident. You may be sure we amplified the report when sending it on to Pilate. Now get to Bethany and keep your eyes and ears open. And see if you can approach this, uh, this, uh, what's his name? Judas. Now, this Judas. Tell him he'll be paid if he'll tell us when we can find Jesus alone at night. I regret this in a way. When I think of what Jesus might have been had he come with us and worked through the official organization for our nation. We have no choice, Abner. He's forced us into a position where we have to acknowledge him as the Messiah or deny him and execute him for blasphemy. He forced the issue, not I. I've gone over all the evidence. In effect, he's blasphemed. But in technical point of the law, I'm not so sure we have a case. Then we'll bring a political charge against him and force Pilate to act. This I would prefer. Let the people vent their anger against the Romans. But one way or another, he must die. Bethany is a village at the foot of Mount Olivet. And the name means village of dates so-called because of the groves of date palms surrounding it. Here in the house of Simon, brother-in-law of Lazarus, Jesus reclined at the table surrounded by friends. Quietly the door opened, and Mary of Magdala, sister of Lazarus, entered the room, and unnoticed by anyone, made her way to Jesus. <laughs> Peter, what, what, what is that? What, Judas? That, uh, that odor. Well, can't you smell it? Oh, yes. Perfume. A very delightful perfume. I wonder where it's, it's coming from. It's by canard. Very rare and expensive. Look, it comes from there. That woman who anoints the master, she has a jar. Woman, it... you! Woman! Stop! Stop! What is it? What's the matter? What, what is, is the Judas? meaning of this, woman? What is it, Judas? Woman, this jar of ointment is worth at least 300 denarii. Why do you trouble her? Why was this ointment not sold and the money given to the poor? She has done me a good turn. But with 300 denarii, we could buy food for the poor. Aye, that's the poor you have always with you. But you do not always have me. For in pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it. For my burial. Master, your burial. Let her be. Amen, I say to you. Wherever in the whole world this gospel be preached, this also that she has done shall be told in memory of her. Oh, very well, Master. Judas, where are you going? Take my excuses, Peter. I'm going to get some air. Judas, don't leave in anger. The Master was not talking to you alone, but to all of us. Isn't he the one always talking about helping the poor? Yet he permits a woman to pour perfume at 300 denarii a jar over his head. Just let me be, Peter. A walk will do me good. Judas! 
Who calls me? I. Abner. What are you doing here? Need you ask? You know the Sanhedrin has charged me with keeping track of Jesus. Oh, yes, I guessed as much. I confess the assignment interests me. I have a normal man's curiosity. I'm a bit like you, Judas. What do you mean by that? What do you know of me? Or of my thoughts? I'm like you in this. If Jesus is the Messiah, I'd want to be on the winning side. You would be the first to agree that if he's the Messiah, there's no need for us, that is, the priests. Precisely. You may be sure Caiaphas realizes that. But Judas, if he's not the Messiah, then what? Don't tell me you've not considered that possibility. I must confess, I've considered it at times. Of course, if you're positive, you'd be a fool to leave him. Are you positive, Judas? I've seen him do many things which would seem to indicate that, that he's a minor prophet or a man gifted with great power. But that's a long step to the Messiah's. Take the feeding of the 5,000. Moses did that and more. Or take this recent incident of Lazarus. The man was in the tomb four days. That could have been arranged. They're good friends. Couldn't Lazarus have retired to the tomb and just gone to sleep for four days? Jesus at first said, Lazarus, our friend, sleeps. Then when we said, if he sleeps, he will be safe, Jesus changed his story to one of Lazarus being dead. Just my point. You notice all along Jesus doesn't come out and say he's the Messiah. He performs a miracle, makes a great to-do about not wanting anyone to be told about it, as if a leper cured could be hidden. Then he lets the people say that he's this, that, and the other. It's a safe policy. But if Jesus is the Messiah, why doesn't he come out and say so? Do you know what I think, Judas? What, Abner? He's never going to declare himself. Why? Because he knows he's merely the son of a carpenter and a woman of Nazareth, born into the world the same as you and I, but will not die of old age like ourselves. Why do you say that? Judas, you're a reasonable man. One who can look at a ledger and see profit or loss at a glance. You didn't stop me to praise my eyes. What's on your mind, Abner? Very well, then, to business. You realize Jesus is doomed. Strange. You should speak of it. How so? I have the feeling that Jesus himself thinks so, too. A few moments ago, a woman anointed him. I objected to the waste. Abner, she had a jar of ointment worth 300 denarii and poured it over his head as if it were water. I objected, and he rebuked me in front of the whole room, saying that she was preparing him for burial. What? Are you sure he suspects Oh, we... come, Abner, you just told me I'm a fool. You've trailed Jesus for months, trying to trap him into saying something which would condemn him. But he was always ahead of you. As if he could read your thoughts. His death has been only a question of time, with the Sanhedrin setting the time. When is it to be, Abner? I see we understand each other. The time? When we can take him quietly so as not to disturb the people. But it must be before the feast. Ah, that is why. So if someone would come to us and say, on such and such a night, Jesus will be without his Galileans at such and such a place. Yes. That man would be paid for his words. I have to get back to the city, Judas. If you know of anyone who would like to make some easy money, will you pass the word? I can always be reached at the home of the high priest. <laughs> that Jesus was at Bethany with Lazarus spread. 
and the people poured out from Jerusalem to welcome him and to march with him into Jerusalem. And they surrounded the house and were joined by bands of pilgrims who had come from all corners for the Passover. And earlier that morning, Jesus, knowing what was in store for him, spoke to his disciples. Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find the coat tied, upon which no man has yet sat. Loose it, and bring it. But won't the owner object to us taking his animal? Should anyone say to you, what are you doing? You will say that the Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it. Come, Judas. Let's you and I go for the colt. Why me? this. We'd look foolish if we were taken before the magistrate and charged with stealing a colt. We risk our very lives now for being with the master. So why concern yourself with the fear of arrest for stealing? But have no fear. The owner will not object when he knows what the colt's for. And uh, just what is it for? I don't know. Are you sure? The master confides in you and the others. Not in me, however. Judas, that is not true. He treats us all alike. But of late, you're the one who has been to yourself. It's you who has always said, when we questioned, that the master had a purpose in everything he did, no matter how strange it might seem to us. Yes. Yes, I have, Judas. And it's true. Judas, I know the purpose. Come, let's hurry. Uh, Peter, wait. What is it? You realize something. Your face went white. Scripture. The scripture, Isaiah, remember the passage? Tell the daughter of Sion, behold, thy king comes to thee, meek and seated upon a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Judas, we are at the brink of great events. I feel the time has come. Before this Passover is finished, Jesus will reveal unto us all that he has promised. Come, come, Judas, don't look so downcast. I see nothing but trouble ahead, fighting and bloodshed. Yes, now indeed his words come home to me. Do not think that I have come to send peace upon earth. I have come to bring a sword, not peace. And brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child... Yes, yes, all that he said, but too... He who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Cross? What does he mean by cross? Whatever he means, it's a harsh saying, Peter. Can't you understand me when I say there will be trouble? Trouble such as Jerusalem has never known before if... If what, Judas? If we find this colt and he rides it into Jerusalem with the people knowing the significance of the animal. Judas, look. There is a she-ass. And her foal. Just as he said we would find it. They loosed the colt and brought it to Jesus. And when it was seen that he was to mount it, a disciple spread a cloak on the colt's back. And the people spread their cloaks on the road. But many ran to the palm grove and cut branches and put them along his path. And this they did, and in the doing of it were they fulfilling the words of the Scripture. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you out of the house of the Lord. The Lord is God 
and has shone upon us. Appoint a solemn procession with leafy branches, even to the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I give thanks to thee, my God. I extol thee with praises. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I ran on ahead. They're out of control. Listen to them. We avail nothing. Behold, the entire world has gone after him. If ever I had any misgivings of what course I must take, my duty to my people now is clear. It is expedient for us that one man die for the people instead of the whole nation perishing. Did you see Judas? Yes. Will he deliver Jesus to us? He did not promise but neither did he refuse. There lies Jerusalem. Shall we enter by the Golden Gate? O oh, Jerusalem, thou hast known in this thy day, even thou, the things that are for thy peace. But now they are hidden from thy eyes. For days will come upon thee when thy enemies will throw up a rampart about thee and surround thee and shut thee in on every side and will dash thee to the ground and thy children within thee will not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. And he went into Jerusalem, into the temple, when he had looked on all things. Then, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. And in the city, Abner the scribe conferred with Caiaphas the high priest throughout the night. Now everything is understood, Abner. You will proceed with the utmost caution. Of course, as the hour is late, I suggest... What is it? Someone's coming. At this hour? So it's the watch. Open it, Abner. I am Caiaphas, high priest. Why do you call at this hour? I am Judas Iscariot, 